Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for booking for our hands-on workshop on judging the wire fox terrier. This presentation serves as your course material for the workshop containing the knowledge element required for being able to competently judge the wire fox terrier. So watch the video as many times as you want to prepare for the practical session on the 27th of November. In all cases, free hand sketches are used of both the correct images as well as those images that are not acceptable. The hallmarks of the breed identify the key elements that make the breed unique. Most of these items are used in the presentation where needed. The wire fox terrier must be active and lively. Bone and strength in a small compass. The conformation perfectly balanced from proportions of skull and foreface to height at withers and length of body being approximately equal. He must stand like a short backed hunter covering a lot of ground on the tiptoe of expectation. The foreface must gradually taper, taper from the eye to the muzzle. Eyes as near as possible circular in shape. His ears must be small, V-shaped and dropping forward close to the cheek. The coat must white must predominate and is discussed fully towards the end of this video. Covering a lot of ground means that the distance from or between A and B represents the normal measurement for the length of the back. From the withers to the set on of the tail. It's a typical short back. C to D is the length measured from the front bastons to the location of the hip bone. The reason for this is the placement of the shoulder blade, which is well forward and contributes to the gun barrel front. And why should white predominate? In fox hunting days, Overmarked fox terriers were sometimes mistaken for the fox and were killed by the pack of hounds. The aim of this hands-on workshop is to provide learner judges with a methodology for judging the wire fox terrier. We are here today to judge the wire fox terrier. Before we start on that assignment, we need to have selected an image of a wire fox terrier, which we believe is the best representative specimen of the breed, perhaps internationally even. For the purpose of this exercise, we have selected Champion UK Blackdale Supreme. We begin the process of judging the exhibit following a five point plan. This is a five point assessment plan which in most cases is required to be completed within a two and a half minute period, which is not much at all. Using our previously selected silhouette, we compare the exhibit with our selected silhouette and we could use a grading system from say one to 10 with one being the least and 10 the most. Movement relates to the short distance from the ring entrance and the judge's assessment table. Examination on the table takes up the majority of the hands on judging activities. Controlled movement relates to a pre marked up away and back movement from judge to turning point and then returning to start point and finishing with a free stack with no baiting or touching of the exhibit allowed. Finally, having completed all five points of the assessments, the placement of the exhibit can take place. Use up the short time that it takes moving into the ring and getting to the examination table to check the soundness and balance of the exhibit. The top line must be stable on the move. The feet front and rear must move straight forward. The exhibit must display a gun barrel front 
and the lead must be loose, allowing freedom of movement. The examination on the table requires a hard stack. The handler is going to be doing all that he or she can to show off the dog and enhance its virtues, or perhaps to minimize faults, trying to make them look less obvious. View from a short distance away to get an overall picture of the dog. Approach obliquely. It's a good idea to greet the handler before the examination. This places the dog and the handler at ease, more like an icebreaker. Remember that you only have about two and a half minutes per dog. Looking at the photo in this, on this slide, you will note that this dog has been overstretched. In this slide, we are assessing the head from the front. The correct head is highlighted in a red rectangle and shows good ears and good eyes. The dog in the top left has hound ears, is cheeky and has light eyes. Top right image has full prick ears, is snippy and sports large eyes. The bottom left image has a short skull, giving it a foreign look. It also has tulip ears and almond-shaped eyes. Bottom right has a short foreface, rose ears and a rounded skull. The teeth must be arranged in a perfect, regular and complete scissor bite. Missing teeth damaged while hunting or fighting should not be penalised provided that the dog is still capable of carrying out its job. Wire Fox Terriers are all about balance. Assessing the head from a side view, it should be noted that the skull, which in the diagram is represented by the line A, is almost as long as the foreface, which is represented by B. A and B together constitute the length of the head, which is represented by C. On inspection, it will be found that this is also the length of the neck, which is represented by the letter D. And to add to that, C is parallel with line D. And the stop at E is the junction between C and D. Heads also need to be viewed from the side. Once again, the winning style is represented by the red rectangle. On top left, the face called foreign has a very short skull. The top right head has an unfinished look as though cut short after manufacture. The head of the bottom left has a divergence of the muzzle downwards and is labeled Roman nose. The middle center bottom row has a dish face, which is self-explanatory. And the last head, bottom right, is labelled as snippy, meaning that there is a lack of substance. Having completed the assessment of the head from all sides, it is time to look at the entire front from the front. To left and right of our diagrams, we have toes in on the left, and toes out on the right. Both of these results indicate serious faults in the construction. This leaves the good front in the red rectangle as the only selection possible. The fault of toes pointing in indicates that the elbows will be out. The shoulder assembly has moved too far forward and this in turn makes the back look too long. Toes out automatically indicates that the elbow will be tied in and you will see that this will impede the movement of the exhibit. In this slide you can really only select the exhibit displaying straight angulation. The diagram is outlined in a red rectangle and shows good hindquarters. Hindquarter angulation is simple. If the dog stands four squares, that is the only choice to be made. Cowhocked and bandy will be very undesirable. Now stand back 
and assess the entire body from the side. A is the length of the foreface and is equal in length to B, the length of the skull. Together A and B equals C, the length of the head. C is also equal to D, which is the length of the neck. The height of the body from the ground to the withers, represented by the letter E, is equal to F, which is the length of the body from the point of the chest to the point of the buttocks. Your winning wire would fit into a square and would have perfect balance. Line A to C, or taken from the withers to the ground, divides equally into two halves at point B, which must be the depth of the chest. Line D represents the ground covered by the underline of the belly or the tuck-up, which exceeds the length of line E, which represents the length of your top line, which is from the withers to the set-on of the tail. Up to this point, the exhibitor has been able to show the strong points of his exhibit. There needs to be some ground rules for movement, which are imposed upon the handler, and they are as follows. All exhibits will do an away and back movement from the judging table to a physically marked point and back to the start point. All exhibits will free stack their dogs after completing the away and back, so there's no baiting or touching to be allowed. No tight leads allowed. The movement is terminated by a full circle around the ring. Note, please, that triangles can be manipulated to conceal faults by exaggerating or exaggerated a short away leg or a double long side on view and a short return. The free stack brings to light any toeing in or out of the toes, which in turn indicates any unsoundness. The good movement sketch is identified as being in the top center of the slide and is enclosed in a red rectangle. Mincing steps refers to short, delicate steps often associated with an exhibit that toes out. Goose steps are frequently seen when leads are too tight and the front feet are lifted off the ground. This will spoil the dog's movement, so insist on looser leads. And last, but by no means least, the coat. The outer jacket must have a hard or harsh wiry feel. The best wiry coats are called pin wire and prickles to the touch of your fingers. As the coat lengthens, it softens and in age the colour does fade. Newer coats deepen in colour and have a harder feel. Any dog whose colour is perfectly even, especially on the head, neck and shoulders, should be checked for foreign substances. Preparing a dog for exhibition is a delicate, time-consuming and tricky business and should be rewarded, all other things being equal. Soft silky coats are uncharacteristic and should be penalised. Furnishings should be hard and dense. Fullness is achieved through density, not length. At this point, having considered all of the favourable points, it will be a relatively simple matter to place the exhibit in the appropriate position in the final lineup. If you should have any questions, please keep them, please make a note of them, and we will discuss them at a future date. But thank you for joining us, and good luck with your judging in the future.